First story. Narcissistic in-laws force their son, who was already in a relationship, to marry OP to be a scapegoat to give them a baby, then abandon her when she had a miscarriage, then begged her to reconcile only to physically assault her for getting them shame. So she sold their house and ran away, using a throwaway because my sister knows my main. So a little backstory I 25F and my husband Vernon 36 have been married for five years. It was arranged by my grandfather and his uncle. We are not Americans, so it's common here. Vernon wasn't too thrilled about the marriage, and he made it very clear because he was already in a relationship with Felicity. 30s F, long story short, Vernon, his family, and Felicity did the most to make my life hell, and my dumbbars was stuck on the idea that one day he might change. About three years ago, I found out I was pregnant, and I was excited, but he wasn't given. We only had SX a handful of times before that, and he got it into his head that it wasn't his. The baby had complications, and I had to get a medical abortion. Not once did he or his family come to the hospital, and I guess that opened my eyes, and I just stopped caring. I stopped trying. I just stopped caring. Early last year, he suddenly started caring, coming home early, calling me, and bringing me flowers. It was quite uncomfortable for me. Then he tells me that he's had a change of heart, and wants to try to better our marriage, because he's developed feelings for me. It's all fishy to me honestly. I wouldn't trust this man as far as I can throw him. He's been doing these little things, and I just can't shake the feeling that there's a joke coming at my expense. Now onto the story. It was my birthday last weekend, and Vernon told me his family was hosting me a birthday dinner. I told him I wasn't comfortable with that, and the last time I was at his parents, they literally told me my baby's complications were my fault and kicked me out because Felicity was uncomfortable, not to mention that they haven't apologized, just started acting friendly. I kept telling him no, and he kept insisting. He let it go, and I assumed that was that. I made plans and went out with my mom and cousins, and he started calling me and asking me where I was. I tell him, and he tells me that he's waiting for me. Long story short, his family is mad that I skipped because they apparently wanted to apologize so that we could move forward, and Vernon keeps saying he understands why I did it, but has been apologizing for everything and nothing. Last night Felicity called to cuss me out because they've left her high and dry and Vernon wants nothing to do with her. So maybe they did want to apologize. I thought I was in the right. But now even my cousins are telling me I was wrong for skipping. Now I am doubting myself. Ada. Relevant comments. About OP. Yes, I do work as a teacher. I don't make much. But since everything in the house is taken care of by Vernon, I've managed to save up a sustainable amount. I can leave. And there wouldn't be many consequences for myself, nothing physical anyway. It's my family that would suffer because my leaving would cause them to be shunned by the community. This means they won't be allowed in shops. They could starve, and people would watch them because their morals would be put to question. I'm looking into ways to take them with me to the next city. Birth control. Birth control isn't exactly a thing here, because it defeats the whole population of the earth thing. So I only get one option, which I don't completely trust but we haven't had SX in a year, so I have it just in case. Why did his uncle arrange the marriage? I'm sorry, I don't know how to add an edit to the post, but yes, his uncle is the head of the family and doesn't like Felicity because she's not from our culture. Vernon didn't go against his uncle because it would lead to his shunning. Marrying me had benefits such as the house we live in and a piece of land in the farming areas, so I guess that was it. His uncle mentioned to the family that the only way the marriage would end was if I was to initiate it. I didn't know about any of this, and everything has started making more sense now. One last comment from OP. Honestly, I don't understand the elders' reasoning behind our marriage. All I know is that I was of age to marry, and had to marry before I was out of season. At the beginning, I truly believed we could work it out, because that's how most of my relatives' marriages started out, and they are happy now. After I realized it was a lost cause, I couldn't leave because a divorce is unacceptable unless there is physical abuse. When F called me to cuss me out, she spilled the beans about the house being a benefit of the marriage and the uncle not liking her because she's not from our culture. I plan on asking V or the others for more information because I'm in the dark, and it's killing me. I want to make a well-informed decision on my next step going forward. At this point, I am only staying because I don't want my family to suffer the shame of me leaving. Mini update edit. Next day also in comments. Wow. I wasn't expecting this to get as much attention as it has. I am overwhelmed and am sorry if I don't manage to reply to everyone. Thank you for your kind words and advice. Some more info on my family, because I saw repeating questions in the comments. 
My family didn't know about most of what was going on, so I chose not to tell them. But they still found out, and are still willing to handle the effects of my leaving. But I can't let them do that. Everyone is happy, and this would disrupt their lives greatly. I can't bring myself to do that, especially with my little nieces. A few hours after I made the post, I decided to have a talk with Vernon after he came home from work. It went somewhat okay. I followed some advice in the comments about starting over on my terms. I asked him questions I needed answers to, and he gave me answers. I wasn't completely satisfied, but it's a start. I told him I would give our marriage a chance, but he had to know that he was completely done with Felicity and would be completely on board with this. I told him to stop with the love bombing because it was making me uncomfortable, and I told him I would absolutely not be having kids in the near future. I told him I was in no way ready to be his wife, and we would continue with our separate rooms. Surprisingly, he was on board with all of this and said that he wasn't a boy anymore, that he was getting older, and that he needed to sort himself out and make things right. I asked him if he only had a change of heart because he wanted me to take care of him in his old age, and he said no. He said he realized that Felicity wasn't what he'd always wanted and started seeing her manipulate toxic people. He said he was willing to put the house in only my name, it's 40% mine entirely as a way of showing that he is all in, and would mess up if I gave us a second chance. He said he was willing to give me as much space as I needed. He said he'd have a word with his family about me needing time and space and taking baby steps. I honestly don't know where this will go at this point. I don't know the direction in which we are headed. But I am willing to try so I can have a free conscience. I've started making a backup plan to leave. But in the worst case scenario, I'll update if anything significant happens. Update comments. Three weeks later. Hey everyone. So a few things happened that I thought y'all needed to know. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for their care and support. I never thought I'd cry after reading words, but you have no idea how much courage your kind words have given me. I told Vernon to go through with the transfer of the house into my name, and he did. I guess he knew he would be getting more money, so now I own the house. Nobody was telling me anything about the 180-degree change, so I decided to go to Felicity. I know it was stupid. She was the only one who was willing to give me any information since she's spiteful, and I think I got what I needed. It's not much, but it's enough to cement my decision. It turns out that Felicity had her womb removed when she was younger, so she couldn't give Vernon children. The whole family found out and turned against her. An uncle has been speaking of retiring, and Vernon has been at war with uncle's sons to either take over the business or become one of the decision makers, and a child would guarantee that he would give a large sum of the company shares that would be in his name and the child's, and since Felicity couldn't give him a child, I was the solution. Felicity told me as much as she knew, and so I went to one of Vernon's cousins. I confronted him about what Felicity said, and after a heated back and forth, he finally confirmed everything. I don't know why, but that hurt. Even though I knew it was too good to be true, I still held on to hope that maybe I was wrong. After the conversation, I decided to play along until I could get out. He completely cut off Felicity, and it's scary just how much he's acting like she never existed. I put in a transfer to a city 12 hours away from here. My head teacher knows my situation and swore not to tell her. I brought up moving to my family, and the majority of them said I'd be selfish if I did that, and their whole lives are here and all that. But honestly, I feel I should put myself first. I told them it was just a thought, and that I would never do that. My mom and brother have been my biggest support system, and I am taking them with me. My cousin is moving with my little nieces to his wife's city. So that's that. I found a house where my mom, brother, two cousins, and I will stay. I listed this house for sale on a private auction page. This will cause a big blowout, but I won't be here, so lol. I have lived in this place for about 40 days, and the most tiring thing is getting my affairs in order without raising suspicion. I refused to be intimate with Vernon and told him I wasn't ready. He told me we'd work on my time, but I see him getting more and more frustrated each day. Even though I am scared for myself and my family about what they will do when they find out, I've decided to leave and am not changing my mind. I'm still young, and I honestly don't want to end up like my mother, in a loveless marriage with a cheating alcoholic. I took the words of internet strangers for me to realize that, and I am so grateful. I'm sorry if this is all over the place. I'll update if anything changes. Update. Hello again. I didn't think I would be making an update this soon, but I messed up big time. I've never been so scared in my life. So a couple of days after I made the last update, my sister-in-law found the post and showed it to V. I knew my time was up, and I had to make a move. 
so I let my mom and brother know that we had to be ready to leave at any moment. V was not happy, and he made it very clear. He told me we were to have a family meeting the next day, and I knew I just knew we had to get out. When he went to attend evening prayers, I gathered all the important belongings I had and told my mom and brother to get ready because we had to leave. I gave them the information they needed to leave in case I didn't make it. We had the meeting in the afternoon, and it wasn't pretty. The uncle came, and he was angry that I brought shame to the family with my actions, and everyone took that as a green light. I ended up with a split lip, a dislocated shoulder, and a few broken ribs, but at least I didn't go down without a fight. Looking back, I feel proud of myself. I spoke up for myself. I defended myself and the people I love. I honestly thought I wasn't going to come out alive. I couldn't breathe properly. I couldn't move. For a while, I just thought of killing myself because I was in so much pain. But my mom and brother managed to get me out. I don't know how. I don't remember a lot because my memory became foggy. But I got out and am alive. We reached our home. My family is still adjusting, and I am still healing. I hope I heal in time to start working. We are safe, even though I am scared that they might find us. I am relieved, and I feel free. I just thought I'd let everyone know how I'm doing. A lot has happened in so little time that sometimes I feel like it's a dream, and I'll snap back to reality. I won't say much, and I don't think I'll make more posts after this one. Thank you all. Thank you to everyone who has supported me. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for making me realize that I deserve more, and that I am worth more. To all the women who shared their stories with me, you all gave me the courage that I needed to stand up for myself. No words can ever express my gratitude to you, internet strangers. Also, thank you to the gentleman who asked me out to lunch. Grace, I know you'll see this. I don't hate you. Just know that you're a woman. And you'll also get married. But I hope your husband's family doesn't treat you the way you treated me. I wish I could be there to see the look on all your faces when the new owner of the house comes and kicks your beloved brother out of his palace. I wish you everything you deserve in all your future endeavors. If I've left any information, please let me know. Second story. OP's rich, entitled girlfriend, who is the same age as OP's mom, humiliated and bullied OP's mother for being poor and even caused her to lose her job. Yet, OP still chose his girlfriend's side for the sake of her future. I'm 21 F and lesbian. My girlfriend is 36 and bisexual. My mom had me young at 16 Brussel, so she's 37 and works as a waitress at a high-end steakhouse. I just moved in with my girlfriend two weeks ago, after dating for two months. Moving in with her is a culture shock, because she made close to seven figures last year, and I'm a struggling actress and college student. So my mom is serving the lunch crowd and goes to greet a woman. This woman did not acknowledge my mom's greeting and interrupted her when she rattled off the specials. When her soup comes, she tells my mom that her wallet costs more than what she made in a month, so be careful. She snapped her fingers to get my mom's attention. But when she came without her beckoning, she rolled her eyes and said, Will you leave me alone? At the end, when my mom asked if she could take her plate, she sarcastically asked if she had any other bright ideas. In the end, my mom went to take her Amex, saw the name on it, and put two and two together. She got a very poor tip at the end of it. She said, she's given me the information, and that what I do with it is up to me. I am in denial that my girlfriend would be like this. She's always been sarcastic, but in a very attractive way. In fact, the only problem we've had is that she sometimes comes off as flirtatious to others, and I get jealous sometimes because I can see she has a lot of options. When we've gone out, she's been nice to the waiters. But my mom and I have a very close relationship, and are very honest with each other, and I see that the thought of anyone being rude to her. When I asked for what the woman was wearing, my mom told me exactly what she put on this morning. So when my girlfriend got home, I asked if she had done anything interesting today. She said not much, and I asked if she was in a bad mood, and she asked why I would ask her. Now she's getting suspicious because I turned down a sex, and when I tried to talk to her again, she said she was busy. What do I do to confront this issue? What can I do if she was just having a really bad day, and this was out of character? I love her a lot and she's been extremely generous to me, so I don't know what to do. Update 1. Posted two days later. There was a lot of tension between me and my girlfriend, after I 21F turned down SX the day before yesterday. I was clearly upset about what my mom told me, but I didn't know how to confront her. She 36F ended up disappearing into her study. After the house manager finished cooking dinner and left, she came out in going out clothes and didn't say anything to me. I asked where she was going, and she said nowhere just meeting up with some friends. 
I texted her a few hours later to ask if she was coming home to eat or if she needed a driver. She doesn't text back for a while until she sends me back a picture of a hotel drink tab that was in the thousands, saying she was paying for everybody. Then she stopped replying to my texts. I don't know who booked the room or who she was with. I hear her stumble in at 3.30 a.m. and she reeks of booze and other random smells. She wakes up at 2 p.m. and goes to her study. I go to her study and she doesn't acknowledge me for a good minute. She finally says, Last time I checked, you were 21, not 12. Adults speak when they have something on their minds and tells me to out with it. So I confront her about being rude to her waitress, my mom. She says that I have been sulky all week and she's been walking on eggshells since last Monday. Even though I thought we were perfectly happy then. She acknowledged she was at the restaurant but said none of what I accused her of ever happened. She said that she was served by multiple people and said that at fancy restaurants, waitresses should know to only approach when the customer beckons and she lightly recalls one of them breaking such protocol. When I ask who she was with last night, she says she's getting bad vibes from this conversation and tells me to leave if I'm going to be a baby. I'm pretty close to crying, and she says she's been thinking that this relationship is giving her bad vibes, and maybe I wasn't ready for an adult relationship, and she clearly misjudged my maturity. I start crying and saying that she was the most successful person I've ever met, and I think she's too good to be true and a long thing about how I felt she's too good to me, which scares me now because everything I said was completely from the heart. She then says that when she met me, it was like the stars aligned. She asks if the life advice she gave me was not helping, and if this relationship was already changing my entire life forever. She reminded me that I was living with four roommates, and now I live like 1%, and she's helping put me through school. She said she even introduced me to her well-connected friends, and when she told them how I was acting, they were so sorry for her, but she told them that bad moments happened to the best of us. I asked her if she would consider meeting my mom to at least talk things out, and she said she didn't want to meet my mom right now. She wanted to help improve my life. This morning, she told me to pick out a dream tote I could use for next semester and joked that I was becoming spoiled. I called my mom, and she said I needed to stick to the things I knew to be true and that she'd never lied to me before. But what terrifies me is how unprepared I was for her reaction. Or how scared I was when she asked me to leave. I don't know what to do. I feel ashamed that I set out to get answers and screwed up. And now I feel ungrateful and like I'm self-destructing my life. She still works extensively with her ex-husband of 11 years, and I feel like I'll never measure up to him. Side update. Posted to Ram I the Arcy Hole gives insight on the relation between GF and her ex. My girlfriend 36F and her ex-husband 43M started a company together 11 years ago. After they divorced, they agreed to continue to run the company together. So I-21F get that they would see each other during work hours. However, yesterday, her ex-husband came over after dinner, and my girlfriend said they were going to work on a project. They were still in her office when I dozed off. I wake up in the morning assuming he went home. Since it was only a five-mile drive from the house, we were vacationing in in East Hampton to Bridgehampton, where his house was, and it wasn't that late. Yet when I walk into the kitchen, I see him casually pouring himself a cup of coffee and asking me if I liked hash browns. I don't know if I'm just not a morning person, but it was pretty triggering because he had owned this house before their divorce, and he was clearly more at home in it than me. My girlfriend walks in, and they start talking, and are ignoring my attempts to join the conversation. It was not about work, just small talk, until I was practically pulling on my girlfriend's sleeve to get her attention. I ask her why he stayed over and why he could not have gone home. She gets offended and says I'm being rude and insecure, and that she was just being a hospitable business partner. Her ex-husband starts petting the dog and says that it was his fault, and he just missed the dog, but sits down and makes no motion to leave. I immediately felt bad because I didn't want to keep him from his dog. My girlfriend says when you do business together, you're not supposed to mean it to your business partner. Then she says that she has a problem with my mom, and is well within her rights to complain to the owner about my mom breaching her privacy but she didn't when my mom told me she mistreated her when she was her waitress. Ada for complaining about him staying over. I have nobody to bounce measures of sanity off of right now. Update 2. A week after the original post. Ada for refusing to choose between my mom and my girlfriend. My mom served my girlfriend at the steakhouse where she worked. She said my girlfriend, who didn't know she was my mom at the time, was outlandishly rude, and that she knew it was my girlfriend after she saw the name on her card. So after that, 
I ended up confronting my girlfriend. And we had a days-long fight. Our first fight ever. Over this before things went back to normal. However, yesterday my mom called and told me she'd been placed on leave from work because my girlfriend contacted the owner and said that she exposed her information to a third party and that she felt her privacy had been violated. The restaurant owner happens to know my girlfriend in passing a very distant acquaintance. My mom says my girlfriend exaggerated her tale to the owner, saying she rattled off numbers from her Amex card to me and also exaggerated the stuff that my mom accused her of. My mom said that since it was a situation, she needed me to tell the owner. She only described her general behavior and a few true comments that stuck out. I love my mom, but my life with my girlfriend is so intertwined at this point. We're vacationing in the Hamptons, but I moved in with her back in Los Angeles, where I am going to college. She's helped me book acting jobs, and I only secured a future internship through her. My girlfriend literally got on her knees, cried, and said she worked so hard for everything she had in life, and what my mom said about her could have destroyed her, and that she didn't want to lose me. When my mom called again, I expressed how angry I was that she was giving me this ultimatum, and that I wasn't getting involved. She gets teary and accuses me of resenting her for not giving me a privileged life. My grandma called me angrily and said that I was a bad daughter who they didn't raise to become this. She refuses to listen to the fact that I'd be alone and possibly homeless if I chose sides. Ada. I feel like I should have the right to choose not to get involved in situations that are between my mom and my girlfriend. Ada for refusing to burn bridges when I don't have to. This was the last post by OP, and since it was made over two years ago, it should be fair to assume that, disconcertingly, we won't get any closure on this story. Third story. Entitled boyfriend, who abandoned pregnant OP and relinquished his parental rights, has returned after five years demanding to be in his daughter's life solely to show off to his new fiancé that he is caring. So, OP gave him an ultimatum, basically saying to F off. I am 29F and have a 5F with my ex, 32M. We were engaged, but never really planned to have kids before marriage, or at least for the next few years. I was on the pill, and he used protection sometimes, but I ended up pregnant. Since it was unplanned, abortion was on the table. He was more into making it work, so both of us decided to keep the baby. I wasn't emotionally prepared, but for him, love is all it takes to make everything work. Fast forward six months, and he started to change. He would give me the silent treatment if I did something wrong. He wouldn't engage in any conversation about the baby and would just yell at me if I asked what was wrong. I was almost eight months pregnant when he told me he's just not ready to be a father and can't do both things. It's either fatherhood or his career. I was scared to be a single mother, so I told him it's fine. I can take care of our baby and be a psalm until things get better for him. But he refused and made it clear everything was over, since the house was his. I left and went to live with my mom, until I found myself a place. I gave birth to my baby girl, and he never came to see her. His mother and sister were there for me, and to this day, they're still part of my daughter's life. As for him, he gave up his parental rights and granted me full custody legally. But he was willing to contribute financially through child support. He voluntarily provides financial support in an amicable arrangement. I'm not proud of it. But there are nights I call him just to ask him why he did that to us. I wasn't even ready, but seeing him happy and excited made me think we could make it work together. He never really answered my calls. We used to communicate through his mother, sister, or email. I love my baby and won't ever see her as a mistake. I'm still doing my best to be the best mother she deserves. I have a good paying job now, and everything is better than before. Now here's the thing. After five years, when I finally feel my life has gotten better, and I have figured out my SHT, he wants to get involved. He's been calling and texting me for a week now. He doesn't regret a thing, and he's not asking. He's telling me that he has the right to see his daughter and be there for her. How can I trust him not to wake up one day and decide that being in her life is a mistake and disappear again? He can do that to me, but I just don't want my daughter to get hurt. I told him he could see her, but not this way. He wants more than just to see her. He even threatened me that if I don't agree, he will have no problem telling her in the future how I'm the reason she grew up without a father. His mother, and even my mother want me to just let him into my daughter's life with no exceptions. And I'm not comfortable doing that because I know him. Wibta if I decide on what's best for our daughter, or just suck it up and let him in. Edit. I just wanted to mention that English isn't my first language, so I'm sorry if there are any errors. Also, sorry if this is a bit long, but I wanted to give you all the details. Comments. 
Necessary future 275. He gave up his rights. That literally means he has no rights. What a terrible person he is. I would not trust him. First he wants a baby. Then when it's too late for an abortion, he doesn't. And you have to raise her on your own. Five years later, he demands to be in her life. He's entitled to nothing, yet he's egotistical and selfish enough to still believe that what he wants is all that matters. How long before he changes his mind again and breaks your daughter's heart the same way he broke yours? OP, this is what I'm afraid of. I don't want her to go through that. Wolf Dragon 32. He gave up his rights to her. He can't do anything but blow smoke up your arse. If he says that he will tell her why she has no father, counter that with the truth on his face. He was a coward and wanted his career, so he gave up his rights to be part of her life. He has no say in her life due to his own choices. Tell your ex to kick rocks and not call you anymore. Tell grandmas that if they try to bring your daughter around him, then you will re-evaluate their relationship with her, as you are her mom. Judgment. NTA. Update. Two days later. He didn't stop with the calls and texts, and I read some of the comments wondering why he suddenly wanted to be in my daughter's life. So I agreed to meet up with him and discuss everything yesterday. We talked for about 30 minutes. 30 minutes of me trying to explain to him that he literally gave up his parental rights years ago. And there's no need for threatening since he legally has no right to see her if I don't allow him. While he was focused on expressing how I haven't changed and complimenting my body, his comments became too much, so I decided to just leave. But I noticed he was wearing a ring on his right hand and didn't hesitate to ask him about it. He said he proposed a few weeks ago, but he thinks he rushed things. I asked him if she knows about my daughter and if this is why he's here. He said no. She still doesn't know, and he genuinely wants to be part of his daughter's life. He basically spent 30 minutes flirting with no shame that he's engaged and showed no sign of being genuinely interested in getting involved. I told him to just forget about my daughter. But if he wants to, we can see a judge, and they can laugh at him. He threatened to cut financial support, and I made it clear I never really needed his help. Sending me $1,000 once or twice a year with his sister was already no help, and I can give back his money if he wants to. Now I know what I did wrong, but it was the only way to get the answer I needed. On my way home, I called his sister and lied about how things went. I said that he told me everything, and how his fiancé encourages him to be a better person, and I think that's why he wants it, which is a good thing. His sister told me everything I needed to know. How his fiancé has a good heart, and how she didn't like it when she discovered that he has a daughter, but never saw her before. She basically wouldn't have said yes if he hadn't promised to try and fix things. So both his mother and sister knew the reason he wanted to get back into my daughter's life and his mother encouraged me to let him in without even being honest with me. So all this wasn't about my daughter. It was about him impressing his fiancé, who was horrified that he wanted nothing to do with his daughter. My mother gets it now, but his mother called the same day, asking what's the plan now. I told her there was no plan. He could have just given me full custody, but he wanted nothing to do with her, to the point where he decided to sign away his rights. And he was already fine with the relationship they have, which is none. She tried to make me consider letting him in because, in the end, it's my daughter's decision. My daughter is five years old. What decision? Anyway, I made it clear to her that both she and her daughter legally aren't my child's family, and from now on, there will be no alone time with her. And if they keep pressing me, I can easily cut them out. I will discuss this with a lawyer, though. I have everything documented, and I'm sure he doesn't have a leg to stand on, but still. Just in case he tries something and let me show you some of his texts. I'm very tempted to get his fiancée's number and send her some screenshots. English isn't our first language, so I translated them for you. Whoever sees you now would never tell you weren't ready for this. You look happier. You know, I really didn't know how much I missed you until I saw you today. Good night. Beautiful kiss, my daughter's name for me. I don't know if I'm just overreacting. But if my fiancée texts his ex this way, I for sure won't find it acceptable by the way, with him back. I realized that I never really dealt with the way he broke my heart. Maybe I cried, but I had to figure out my life as soon as I could for the sake of my daughter. When I gave birth, all I started thinking about was my daughter. Even the nights I called him, it was never to ask about me. It was always about us. I was scared and not ready to be a mom. And now that I'm a mother, I've never felt this strong. I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but I'm glad how my life turned out. Thank you for the advice. I'm glad I gathered the courage to see him. I feel so much better.
At least now I know I don't have to worry about him shaking my baby's life up. Comments. Henchwench89. I'm sorry you have to deal with this jerk. So many people in your OG post called it. He's only interested in your daughter because of his new woman. Honesty blocks him and goes very far with his family because they are not looking out for your or your daughter's best interests. OP thank you. I'm planning to do that. But he's still not done with the threats about telling lies to my daughter. I'm trying to gather everything I can before I block him. Henchwench89. That's fair. Mute him so the messages still accumulate. But you have a break from them. Actual offer 127. Yeah, if I were his fiancé, I would thank you if you told me about this. He's lying to her with the help of his family. That poor girl is getting blindsided. She thinks he should reconnect with his daughter, because she probably has a good heart. I feel bad for her. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.